I'm Lodi Jalsingari, and I'm the special envoy of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and I'm also the president of the International Campaign for Tibet. I would like to talk to you today about the U.S. Tibetan Resettlement Project. Now, this is a one of the uh, important projects that the Tibetan government in exile and its uh, friends in the United States has undertaken. Uh, and the major credit for this project must go to my friend, uh, Mr. Ed Bartner, who initiated uh, uh, the project you know, to uh, uh, make it happen. But uh, uh, the reason why you know, this uh, project is very important for us as a Tibetans on the whole is uh, this is going to give us a tremendous uh, uh, possibility of reaching out to millions of Americans uh, because all of these Tibetans will become ambassadors in their own way uh, to represent the cause of Tibet, the culture of Tibet, the civilization of Tibet, and also through them uh, 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 carry the message of the Tibetan people inside Tibet, uh, their sufferings, their aspirations to everyone uh, who had uh, uh, helped us uh, make this uh, project uh, possible from uh, uh, the local committees to individuals uh, to the members of Congress who made it possible to uh, you know, introduce the legislation uh, to everyone in this country. You know, uh, let me express uh, uh, our gratitude on, on behalf of the Tibetan government and the Tibetan people. In 1989, when Ed came with the idea of uh, Tibetan U.S. resettlement project, uh, many of our friends had uh, some kind of mixed uh, feeling. Uh, many felt that the United States is a melting pot, and uh, 1,000 Tibetans will will e eventually lose uh, the Tibetan culture. We had a lot of uh, debates uh, uh, within the Tibetan leadership and finally uh, we have concluded uh, that there are more advantages uh, in bringing uh, 1,000 Tibetans to the states. Uh, although uh, the United States is known as a melting pot, there are so many uh, ethnic uh, community uh, who are doing so well uh, while maintaining, uh, while participating in the American way of life, uh, they are keeping their culture intact. Uh, we thought that by bringing an additional uh, 1,000 Tibetans, we will definitely be able to uh, make uh, a difference. Uh, I'm sure uh, 1,000 Tibetan people will uh, do very well here in this country. Tibetans are very hard worker and uh, very sincere and uh, law ab abiding and above all you know, Tibetans are smiling people and uh, I'm sure uh, uh, the Americans can also learn you know many things uh, from the Tibetans. Th this country is, is known you know to be a land of opportunity uh, since there are lots of opportunities uh, I'm very confident that the Tibetans will do well. I got this very deep feeling that um, Tibetans inside of Tibet were extremely limited in the opportunity that they had to preserve their culture, that, that it was rapidly being destroyed, and that something could be done here in the West, here in the, here in the United States of America, for that culture to survive, that, that if the, the main body of the culture was being taken apart and destroyed by the Chinese, at least we could plant some germ cells of the culture here in North America that could grow and over time, over a long period of time, so that it would no longer be just people giving lectures on the Dharma, but it would be a, a transmission of Tibetan culture in the form of small communities of people living it every day, living this culture every day, not in a traditional form, not the way it was before 1949, but a form of this culture which is inoculated against materialism and secularism and the modern world, which, which knows about computers, which has professions such as the professions of law or scholarship or other things like this. 
we had to make a deal with the Congress that Tibetans would not come into the country as refugees, which they truly are. So we, we accepted the category of, of displaced people, uh, which acknowledged the status that, that, that Tibetans were not just coming as economic immigrants, that, that, but that their culture and their way of life had been displaced. So like many other pieces of legislation, there was this huge immigration bill that was for half a million pe visas, half a million visas. And we put the, the uh, Tibetan Immigration Act as uh, a subdivision of the 1990 Immigration Act. But because we're halfway through the resettlement of 1,000 people with almost no money. We have done this with almost no money. If the federal government had financed a refugee program, it would have been about $7,000 per capita that they would be spending on refugee entitlements. We have done this uh, in completely in the private sector um, with no major foundation support or no major government or state uh, funding, uh, largely from the donations of private individuals. And, um, and I don't recommend doing this on no money. It would help if we had money to do this. We had an amendment to the Legal Immigration Act um, of 1990, which was introduced by Congressman Barney Frank, that provided 1,000 immigrant visas for Tibetan refugees living in India and Nepal. Uh, and we passed both houses in the Senate. It was signed into law. That is an enormous uh, victory because it is a recognition of the separateness of Tibet and also gives opportunity for no more Tibetans to be here. Hey, I'm Joe Coleman. I I'm part of the Office of the U.S. Uh, Coordinator for Refugee Affairs. Back in 1988, uh, we invented a program called the Private Sector Initiative. And uh, in, I guess, somewhere along about the first year and a half of that, we were contacted by Ed Bednar and others who were beginning to develop the Tibetan Resettlement Project. And they had heard about our project, and it seemed to be quite close to what they had committed themselves to doing with the Congress. They had, by the way, a remarkably uh, 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 wonderful experience because of the interest of the American public in Tibetans, uh, a good experience with, with the Congress, particularly Barney Frank and a couple of other uh, uh, members who took a great deal of interest in this program. And it was, it was possible, as many of you know, uh, to accomplish something that's rarely accomplished, which is to have a small, special bill for a relatively uh, tiny number of people, 1,000 special immigrant visas for Tibetans to come to the United States. Uh, I'm Tenzin Tethong. I'm the chairman of the Kashak. The Kashak is the, the cabinet of His Holiness the Dalai Lama of the Tibetan government in exile. The Tibetan administration did not initiate this project. This project was basically initiated by Tibetans and Americans. And uh, only after it had secured the approval of the United States Congress and the United States government did the Tibetan administration become involved in the selection process. My name is Tenzin Tagla. I'm the National Project Coordinator for the Tibetan U.S. Resettlement Project based here in New York City. When the Immigration Act of 1990 was passed, Section 134 authorized 1,000 immigrant visas for 1,000 displaced Tibetans in India and Nepal. When the State Department came out with its regulations, it, has, it, it had designated the CTA, the Central Tibetan Administration in Dharamsala, as the agent in charge of, of the whole process. Now the CTA was based in Dharamsala, and, in, and the CTA in turn designated the Tibetan U.S. Resettlement Project here in the United States as the agent in charge of the whole resettlement process here in the United States. Since this project didn't involve any type of federal funding from the United States government, what we had to prove to the United States authorities was that all 1,000 Tibetans would come here and not become public charges. Now in order to get the visas, what we had to do was we had to secure 1,000 notarized guaranteed job offers for all 1,000 Tibetans. 
Besides that, each Tibetan had to be matched up with a sponsor, a home, and a, and a job. Uh, uh, surprisingly, some of the bigger cities, we, we had less jobs, whereas smaller cities, university towns, we had, we had um, uh, many more jobs available than places such as Los Angeles or New York. Dharamsala um, notified all the Tibetans in India and Nepal about these visas and it was announced and applications were accepted from Tibetans between the ages of 18 to 45 including some other type of requirements. Uh, there were thousands of applications and to be very fair and unbiased what the CTA selection committee had decided was to have a lottery. Approximately I would say maybe 10,000 Tibetans applied for this program. Now, out of these 10,000 Tibetans, it came out to roughly about 4,500 applications that were qualified to, um, to come over in the program. The CTA held its lottery and, and uh, consequently 1,000 Tibetans were selected. The Tibetan government in exile has a very good network of administration and uh, the Tibetans who are scattered all over India and Nepal are under a Tibetan welfare officer or a Tibetan settlement officer who guides them in getting their documents and also preparing themselves for the immigration. I am Miju Dorje, uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama's representative based here in New Delhi. So Department of Home Affairs has sent this each uh, this application form to individual to fill up the forms. This is normal requirement. But now, instead of this, we have summarized in a very short form. So only this much. We have to prepare five copies of this to each applicant and submit it to government. So this is the final process for getting our travel document to go to United States, especially for this immigration. So we have the 15 group people inside the American consular's office. They are uh, doing their document checking. And uh, around 11 o'clock, the consular will call them for the interview. And I'm pretty sure that uh, all the 63 people will be issued visa. I'm Siring Chozom. Uh, when I get back to United States, I will work as a nurse because I'm a very professional nurse and I'll try my best to look after a patient very well. More, uh, moreover, I'm a very sincere and hardworking person. So I got um, I, visa consular approved my visa. I'm so happy. <laughs> when I get back to America, I'll work hard. I'm in front of uh, United States Embassy. I'm just coming out from Embassy and uh, the interview was quite very good and very convincing. And the consular, were also, consular, he too is a very good and very good gentleman and he asked me so many questions which I'll give all the answers. Detail and then finally I'm lucky and he has granted me the visa. In United States sir, is a place where we can do anything else if we can sir. United States is a place where there's a dignity of labor which is not in India sir. And if what I want to do there is first thing is I want to help my parents, I will help my family, and the next is I want to help my countrymen and I, I want to work for the cause of my nation, sir. My name is Baldin Gutub. I am one of the lucky Tibetans who have been selected uh, in this uh, 1,000 uh, Tibetans who are uh, to be resettled in the United States. So when I go to the United States, what I personally feel is that on one hand I'll be able to earn earn to ensure the future of my children and my wife. Plus, the United States is the richest and the country which plays the leading role in all the world affairs, global, global issues. So it is in this context, I'll be having more, better interactions with the people from all walks of life, people who matter, who can really do something for the issue of Tibet. And my job there is at the moment uh, housekeeping and cleaning. The last 16 years I was a teacher here and I have been teaching math and science in the, all the, in, through all these years in the Tibetan schools. So when I got the letter from the sponsor 
saying that I have to work in a hotel as a housekeeping and cleaning all that thing, that too, uh, $4.7 per hour like that. First of all, I thought it's something quite shocking. But then when I looked at the other side, because mine going there is not only for the monetary benefit, it is of course one of them, but the main thing is that we are Tibetans in India, the government of India, His Holiness Dalai Lama, everyone has been very kind to us. Like today I'm before you here to be able to express myself and about the issues of Tibet to other people. Whatever I am today is in the name of refugee. I got all the opportunities of studying everything by the grace of the Dalai Lama and in the name of the refugees. And now, after this, we'll be going to Dharamsala because we are expecting the Dalai Lama to reach Dharamsala on 21st by 11. So some of us are living today night, some of us will be living tomorrow night. What is happening now is that the, uh, under the office of Tibet, there will be a whole new office set up. This office is going to be called um, the North American Tibetan Community Assistance Program. And this office uh, will be administered by Nyana on behalf of the office of Tibet. Now, Nyana is a New York Association for New Americans, which is the largest resettlement agency here in the United States. It's based here in New York, and it's been very involved with our New York cluster site. It has been the institutional sponsor for the 80 Tibetans who came here to New York. So now, basically, this office is going to be the, it's going to be our community office here in the United States and Canada as well. We are an organization that has been resettling refugees in this country, in the New York metropolitan area, since 1949. And the organization was established at that time to receive and resettle the thousands of displaced persons who were coming out of the refugee camps in Eastern Europe, having survived the Holocaust. Obviously, the organization is one that is run under Jewish auspice and receives its funding both from the federal government 
and from the Jewish community. And the refugees who come here receive a whole host of survival services, everything from short-term financial assistance, to English as a second language, counseling, case management, health care, housing location assistance, vocational services of all kinds, and ultimately um, uh, job placement. It was within that context that uh, we began with the U.S. Tibet Resettlement Project in greeting what is now about 80 newcomers from Tibet into the New York area. And as I think about this project, and I think about entering the second stage, a stage of family reunification and community development for the new arrivals, the thousand who have come here in the past year. I came here in the third uh, group of resettlement project. In the United States, we have to uh, take everything very fast. We have to run after the time. Like um, when I woke up, well, I woke up at uh, six o'clock, and I catch my train at seven. If I miss that train, means I will be late for the work. So we have to catch the time. Like um, whereas in India and Nepal, we do, we don't have that much of uh, we don't have to do that quick. My name is Diki Tran Jamso. I am the coordinator for the Connecticut Cluster Site. The Tibetan Resettlement Project will have a very, very strong impact on the Tibetan community, even in India.